Hi, I am coming to you live from my office this morning and um, just decided that I would take a few minutes to sit and chat with you and tell you about something really special uh, that I'm going to be doing and encouraging you to do in this new year. So with that said, Happy uh, New Year, Happy 2016. As uh, many of you know, I lost my family. We lost our sweet Kaylee, my niece, 18 years old, on November the 4th. And it has, I won't sugarcoat it for you, it has been awful. It was um, such devastation for our family to lose her. She is the absolute most precious thing I have ever had to bless my life. And goodness, just my heart, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, then you know that my heart runneth over with the most precious memories and silly moments and just beautiful time shared with her over our the course of her life and our moments and minutes and years together. And I can honestly say she just, just so extremely precious. Like there really are not enough words I often feel to be able to describe her. And it has been very comforting to me and uh, such a blessing to read all of the messages and the things that so many of you have shared about her. And just, I think, well, I know this, that when when she passed away and people started writing on Facebook about her and how much they loved her and they, they just cared about her and what she meant to them and all of that, I realized out of hundreds of messages, comments from people, postings, that every one of them said something about her smile. And that just... In which we all know that, and we, you know, see it as her family. But to just to sit back and to know that, to recognize that, oh my goodness, wow, everybody um, sees that about her. That's what when they see her, they just see that smile, and it's just, it's so amazing, and it's just, it's absolutely. When she would walk into a room, she literally lit up the room, and it wasn't just her smile. You know, she infused that with this this beautiful joy and this grace and this silliness and her giggles that, uh, you know, I like to think that she and I were known for sharing together. And, um, but I would see that in her, you know, and I would watch her. And so I'm just very thankful that so many of you have been touched by her and her faith. Her faith was so important to her. And I watched her blossom with that. I watched it just to grow in her and, I knew this would happen. Cooper was downstairs enjoying looking out his little window, and now he's he's over. He has so many buckets of toys that it's it's unbelievable. Um, but yes, he he's over trying to get something. So just in a second. Okay, no 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 no. You need to go get your ducky. Where's your ducky? Go get your ducky. You gotta go find Mr. Ducky. So uh, anyway, um, just. Back to her smile. It it was so amazing to me to see how there and to read how so many of you that is something that stood out to you. Um, every comment that was written, it just there was like I said, I cannot think of one that was written in those first days when everybody was leaving messages and um, trying to send comforting words. Cooper, what are you reading? Sorry, um, comforting words about our her lo the loss of her and. Every one of those messages had something in it about her smile, how her smile made you feel, how her smile lit up a room, how she just, she made you feel so special when she smiled at you. And just what an amazing smile, always that smile, Kayla, your smile. And there's just such truth to those words because that is exactly how, that's just how she was. You know, she just, um, she'd come into a room and, and she just lit it up with her, her, her personality, her heart, I just often I reflect on it and I say so many times, I just don't know in all of my years of ever having known a heart like hers. I mean, it just, it absolutely, even from the time when she was a little girl and we would do photo shoots and I, she'd be, you know, two years old sitting there in front of me, me with my camera down on the floor with her and asking her to pose and, and do things. And she's just so loving. She'd come right up to you and just want to love on you and hug on you and crawl up in your lap and 
just gave the best snuggles. And, you know, so, I mean, even back to when she was just a, a baby, she just had this, this joy and this glow about her. And I often find myself, you know, saying when, when I share things about her, that um, she just had, I, I often will say, that's just so Kaylee. That was just so Kaylee. Because that is the truth. That's exactly, um, that's exactly the best way to put it. Just so Kaylee. The smiling and the grace and the personality and the loving on other people and the compassion for other people. And as many of you know, she suffered with uh, extreme <clears throat> chronic migraines and had seen, I think, every doctor under the sun, every specialist. That's not yours, Cooper. <laughs> just a minute. That is not yours. Come on. Can you please give that to Mommy? Well, you know, for right now, you can have it. Um, it's, it's something of John's. So I'm not real worried about it. Um, but just the... Uh, um, sorry, my conduct. Um, watching her deal with the chronic migraines was absolutely heartbreaking. And... I have in so many of my journals and things, I just have, you know, where I would write out my prayers or um, praying for, you know, the list of people I was praying for or something. And I can just flip back through my calendars, my journals and things, and see, oh, Kaylee felt better today. Her headache was better today. Or Kaylee seeing this specialist today, and they got, um, you know, good news about something new to try or something different that might work and help her. And so it was just a constant thing for me to be praying about her and thinking about her. And her headaches were so, I often say they they were debilitating because it got to the point she was a cheerleader and she loved playing basketball for her school. And it got to the point where she stopped both of those activities simply because it was too much for her. Her headaches were so severe and she suffered with such pain after she would try to do a practice or she had a game or something and it just broke my heart because she she was so great at both of those things and that's something being a young girl you know she was excited about doing but it was so difficult and hard for her and the pain was so bad that I can remember when she decided <clears throat> to make the decision um, okay just have to check on him to make the decision to stop playing basketball and she called me one night we were talking about it and she said um, you know <clears throat> She said, I want to tell you, I've really been thinking about this, and you know I have, but I have come to the decision. I've made my final decision about it. I am going to stop playing basketball, and I talked to the coach or, you know, whatever she told me about that, and she said, I just, I love it, Ann Margaret, but I absolutely, I realize that I can't do that anymore, but I also, I'm okay with that because I realize that, you know, God has other things that he will use me for, other things that I can enjoy, other things that I can do, but that right now in my life with dealing with these headaches, that's just not something that I need to be doing. You know, I've had my foot injured a couple of times and uh, other injuries, and I just kind of realized after this last injury with my foot that, and the pain that I experience after practice and after games and how hard it is for me, that I just realized that I think my body's trying to tell me something. I just don't need to do this right now. And I just remember talking to her and telling her how extremely proud I was of her for making that decision, for having thought about it, giving it a lot of thought because there have been some other times where she had thought about maybe she was ready to stop. She needed to. But she would push herself and she would try again. And she was so determined. And so I really praised her for making that decision. I knew it was hard for her. And, um... She said, I feel like it's the best thing for me to do. And that's another word I use to describe her determined. Her determination absolutely amazes me still to this day. I can just think of so many things. I can I remember seeing her when I knew she was suffering so bad with such pain with her migraines. Maybe she was having a really severe one. And or there was one that was getting worse as the hours went on, and maybe we had a family get together, you know, we were all eating together, hanging out or something, and I could just watch her as she was trying so to be there with everybody and to be a part of it. And I can remember, you know, oftentimes I would say to her, Kaylee, are you okay? I know your head's hurting, you know, a lot, and 
um, are you okay? And she'd say, I'm okay. I'm fine. Yeah, it's hurting, but I'm okay. I'm making it. And again, it just broke my heart for her to have to suffer with those. And, but I learned a lot from her. I learned a lot about, you know, determination and still in the midst of being in pain and suffering, you can extend grace and you can be compassionate for other people and you can still let your the light of the love that's in your heart shine and especially your faith even she talked about her struggles you know she talked about the the migraines and how how they were so difficult and they prevented her from doing things and living the life that she wanted to and all um so she shared that and she shared about how she was coping with it and getting through and and our the love of our family and our support and encouragement and being there for her and all was I'm sure huge for her but her faith was enormous and so she and I just had these long conversations at times with a lot of times you know and even our text messages and things where we just talked about that kind of stuff we talked about our hearts and we talked about letting go and letting God help us with things that were out of our control. Uh, we, we talked about, you know, looking to Him to find our strength and to, to be able to cope with life's difficulties. And, and she just had this most beautiful faith. And like I said earlier, I just watched this faith just grow and blossom. And she often said, I don't know why I have this. Why? At, you know, her, she'd had her headaches for three years. She'd suffered with them. So it started when she was 15 years old. And she would say, I don't know why I have to have migraines. I, I don't know why, but I know that God will help me to use my pain to help other people. And she had just started her first year of college, and she was so excited about going into a career of nursing. And absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt, I had said, there is nobody else that I could imagine making such an amazing nurse. I just could envision her. You know, walking into patients' rooms, if she's working in a hospital setting or something, walking into patients' rooms and just this smile, you know, somebody that's sick or they feel bad or they're there for tests or whatever the reason is, but her walking into a room and just glowing and having this smile and this heart full of such compassion and that person just feeling like, oh my goodness, I feel horrible, but this this ray of light of sunshine has this this joy has just burst into my room, and she's just like glowing with the most beautiful compassion and love. You can just tell it comes right from her heart. And I just so many times from the day that she said she wanted to go into nursing, I just would think about that off and on, and I think about wow. She is going to bless a lot of people. She is going to touch so many hearts. I mean, seriously, when I would think about it, I would just like I just feel so excited in, inside, and I would just think, "Oh my goodness! Like this is just going to be amazing!" Like I just wish when when she's doing that, I could just be a fly on the wall and watch her and and see her in action and just watch people's expression. Because I could just imagine that you could you could have somebody in a room and they would feel so bad with whatever they were coping with, their sickness or whatever was going on with them. But she would walk out and it would just almost be like they had been infused with this joy that just not only touched them emotionally, but physically helped their body to almost be like a, a, a plant that was wilted that just you'd added water to it. And like, I think that's the best description to say a plant that... It needed watering. You just so wilted, and that she just comes in, and she would just be this dose of this, this most refreshing water that would just you just see this this plant blossom and like come back to life and and to feel better and to think positive and and to you know look look for something good and I could just see her doing that for people. I could just see her making such a difference in people's lives like that, and and how blessed that people would be to be touched by her. And I was so, so excited for her to get started 
and and then she'd gotten this incredible job offer at the hospital, so she was actually getting to work in a hospital setting, and she had been there for, um, been doing that for two weeks prior to passing away, and already I heard, you know, the nurses just had fallen in love with her, and the patients, and that she would just go in, and it was just things that, you know, she might go into a room and say, oh my goodness, well, it looks like, uh, Maybe you need an extra pillow. You don't look so comfortable. Wait just a minute. I'll be right back. And the person like, oh, I'm okay. No, no, no. Just a minute. I'll be right back. And she'd go and she you know, get a pillow or something and um, go back and fix it up for him and talk to him. And, and the patients were talking about how much they liked her and just people were just drawn to her. That's the thing. People were just drawn to her. And... Oftentimes, I would say, you know, she's just got this thing about her that pe that just pulls people into her, and she's just so loving. She just has this heart. I mean, it's just like, like I just, I couldn't wait. If if we were going to my parents' house or something, and oftentimes, you know, she knew we were coming and we were going to stop there first, she would be there at their house. And just to walk in that door and to find her, and she'd get up, and she'd hug me, and we'd love on each other, and we just, there was, there was such a soul connection. Between the two of us. That, it was so, and is yes, so amazing to me. That this started when she was a little girl. I mean, I'd say, you know, from the moment she was born, I looked into her eyes and, you know, there was a connection with her. But even as this little girl, the way we talked to each other and the way we connected, you know, with our age difference, because I was 18 when she was born. Goodness, I had not thought about that. I was 18 when she was born. Whew. She was 18 when she passed away. Um, it's incredibly hard stuff, I tell you. There is nothing easy about grief. And especially when somebody, it's difficult when I lost Granny and she was 93. And that was so hard. But 18, there's nothing that prepares you for that. Um, but this, this connection that she and I have... Just started when she was a little girl, you know, and she would say to me as she got older, she's like, you know what, you and I, me and you, she's like, we got, we have this connection. It's like our souls are just connected in the most beautiful way. And she'd say, I don't even, sometimes if I'm trying to explain something or tell you about something, I want to share something with you, something that's important to me or whatever, I don't even have to worry about if I can find the right words or if I'm saying it in the right way because I just know that you will get it. I know that you will understand. And oftentimes, I don't even have to finish what I'm saying because I know you get it. And we talked about how special it was. I said the same thing about her. And how special it was that we knew that with each other, the other one understood. And I shared with her, you know, she, um, the past few years, we talked about, you know, I shared with her that I deal with anxiety and I've, you know, most of my life ever since a little girl, I don't know why, but hey, we're all wired differently. So, you know what? Embrace who you are, by golly. And the important part of that, the first step, I think, is embracing who we are and then figuring out, what do I do with me? And maybe if there are little things or big things or whatever that are, you know, frustrating to me or that I cope or deal with, will help me, dear Lord, to figure out how to manage those things. And so I think that, you know, like I shared that with her. I shared um, about that I dealt with anxiety and, and it was something that she and I could share and we talked openly about where, you know, because she also had, I think, anxiety with not ever knowing when she was going to get such a severe migraine, when it was going to turn into that. She could be off on a trip with a friend for a fun weekend at the beach or something or she could be on a school outing or, um, Cooper, what are you doing? Um, so you just, 
she she didn't ever know when her head might be hurting a little bit and when it would turn into such an awful migraine. And so, of course, that would cause a person anxiety and and upset in trying to cope and deal with that and to live a normal life. And especially when you're 15, 16, 17 years old, trying to live with chronic pain, I, honestly, I, I cannot imagine how difficult that has to be for someone that age. It's difficult for somebody that's 35, that's 45, but at that age, when you have all these new life experiences to be a part of and that you want to experience and, and to join in and that kind of stuff, and you have this thing that, that limits you. So we talked very open about, you know, we shared books that we like to read, inspirational things, and about positivity and how to cope with anxiety and um, dealing with, you know, things that we worried about and how learning how to let go and give it to God and, and to grow in our faith and our prayers and things like that. So we talked very uh, closely and, and just so detailed about our heart and soul thoughts and feelings. And I have to say, I am so thankful that she knew that she could come to me and that we could talk about these things and, um, and she would, you know, sometimes she might call me later. She might send me a text message. Hey, do you have a minute we could talk about this? Or, Hey, I got something I want to share with you or, um, you know, so it just, what a blessing for us to have that kind of soulful connection. And, um, which I truly believe is why I see the signs and the visits and the connection still existing with us now that she's passed away. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, but in all of that, as I began, once she passed away, and I you know, began sharing my heart with you all on Facebook and writing messages to her and about her and all, um, it hit me. A lot of times I would, I would use the phrase, Kaylee Joy. She just had such Kaylee Joy. Just she just radiated with this this joy that came from her heart that was so genuine. The compassion that she had for other people, the you know putting somebody before herself, thinking of others, and um, and I'm also now a big advocate about that we don't need to think and put other people before us before we've taken care of ourselves. And I always tried to encourage her about that and help her at a young age to realize that you have to take care of yourself and then you can help other people. We have to look after ourselves. We cannot feel guilty about doing self-care, looking after ourselves emotionally and physically so that we can then give from that place in our heart, give that compassion and that grace and extend that to other people. But if we don't look after ourselves and take care of us, then we don't have it in us to do that. We might for a little while, but then we'll run really low on it and we start suffering emotionally and physically. So in this year, I hope to, to share some things with you about how to get over the guilt of looking after you. How to put yourself first in the right way and to be okay with that and to know that you have to do that before you can start looking after and caring for all these people in your life that you love and care about. But more on that later. <laughs> but anyway, so I kept finding myself talking about her Kaylee Joy. And it's not Kaylee's Joy with an apostrophe S. It's not that. It is, quote, Kaylee Joy. It's a type of joy. And the kind of joy that it is, it's Kaylee joy. And it is the most beautiful joy that I have ever witnessed with my eyes. That I have been blessed by, that I have been a part of, that I have felt emotionally and physically. That I have experienced. It is an amazing joy. I've experienced it myself and I have watched others experience it. And so after she passed away, I just realized the first two weeks when we were back home were horrific for me. Most days, I sat at my computer and looked at her pictures and cried my eyes out. And at night, I read books about grief and how to cope and how to deal. And what do you do 
with all these feelings? What do you do with this loss, this heartache? My heart, I would say it was, it was broken. There was no way you could break it. It could break anymore. And then in the days to come, it just felt like it broke more and more and more. And later on in some other videos and things, I will share. Could we? I will share. Um, he's under, such a monkey. I will share with you about some things of my journey of grief and how um, in those first few weeks and in, in the coming days and in this coming year, how I am going to try to cope with this grief. Because I will tell you this, with each passing day, it does not get easier. It gets harder. Because every day that passes is another day that I've not seen her or talked to her or sent or received a text message from her. It's another day that I've not gotten a hug from her, that I've not gotten this little bit of encouragement from her, that I've not seen some cute card and sent it to her in the mail. So it gets harder. It gets worse. I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you because it's the truth. And if there's anybody out there that's watching or that's going to tell you and you've you experienced grief that, oh, in time it'll get better, well, I do try to be a sweet Southern girl, so I won't tell you what I would really suggest that you say to them or what I would like to say to them. And because my mama is watching this, you know. Um, but I don't really like stuff like that. And I have about this much patience for those kind of comments. First of all, everybody grieves in their own way, and it's a very individual thing. Second of all, there is no time limit to grief. It does not come in a package. You don't unwrap so much on certain days and open up the rest of it the next week or whatever. It hits you at times. You think that you are you're doing okay that day and all of a sudden you find yourself in the grocery store and you're bawling. You're not even on the card aisle, but you're looking at the pickles and all of a sudden you just can see this person in your mind, in your heart. And you just think, gosh, I, I shouldn't have come to the grocery store today. So I am very adamant about we don't tell other people how to grieve. And for all the beautiful thoughts of, yes, she is with Jesus. And she is with my granny and my grand Dudley and Mamie and my great uncle Dick and these beautiful people that are in our families and that have passed. And we know that she, that is where she is, I promise you this. When a heart, when a soul, when a family is grieving, I hope I can say this in a way, if you know me, you know me well enough to know my faith is very strong and I'm a Christian and I am so thankful for our dear Lord and all the blessings and the that we have Him to guide us and to protect us and that, that that is where I draw my strength from and I so believe in prayer and but I'm also a human being and I will tell you this it, it doesn't help it's not comforting to hear when your heart is so broken to hear people say oh but she's with she you know she's with Jesus oh but you know she's celebrating with Jesus Oh, but you know, she's, you know, you know, she's, um, she's with Jesus now and she's not suffering or anything. And people mean well, and I so appreciate that. But later on, I'll do some, some things to share with you about grief. And what do we say when somebody's heart is so heavy with grief? And I'm going to tell you some things that we don't say. Because sometimes on that particular day, maybe when a person says that, maybe it is so hard and difficult and you just feel like, really? It almost feels like when sometimes when people are saying certain things to that nature, that it's kind of as though they don't, oh, they don't, they don't want to, no, they don't want to, um, I'm not real sure what to say, so let me just say something that sounds, and I, again, I know people mean well, so please, I hope no one takes this um, personally or the wrong way. But 
is that we have to say, you know what, there are some things, it's not the right time to say those things. Just to say, I'm here for you, I love you, I love Kaylee, I miss her too, I'm thinking of you. Those are awesome things to say. But we're going to get into that more later as the year goes on. And as I share with you about my journey in grief. And it'll probably get a new name because grief is, you know, but we got to address it. And we got to deal with it because it keeps trying to deal with us. So we'll get to that later. But back to this thing that is so very important. What I want to share with you is this whole business about Kaylee Joy. After I'd been home and realized that I could not sit at my computer every day and cry. And that's pretty much what I had been doing. Or I would go take Mr. You-Know-Who out for W-A-L-K. -okay. Yes, he spells. I told you all he's smart. You know, Even they say that at the kennel. Um, but it works in my, it's not in my favor. <laughs> it's in his, but not mine. I realized, I said, you know, God, I know that I have to do something with myself. That I have to do something with this pain. That it's so heavy and it's so big in my heart and soul that I have to do something. And please just help me to use some of the gifts that you've given me to try to honor Kaylee and help her love and her lot to live on in the hearts and souls of people that she has touched and that she's yet to touch. Because I, I truly see the domino effect that somebody, I so many times, like I've been so, just a second, Koopy, that is not yours. No, no, no. Seriously. Mommy boot camp supposed to start today, again. Um, it's a new year, so we need a new chapter of mommy boot camp, obviously. Um, but anyway, that, and again, this totally was just a fly by the seat of my pants kind of thing. Did not prepare for this video. <laughs> Did not close the door over there. Um, but you can see my adorable dream sign over here. And uh, PB Art, Patty Baller. I love her and met her in person. She is a beautiful, sweet artist. And this adorable little blonde Cinderella behind me. That is a painting by her. And I got to meet her at the first art show I got to attend after we moved here uh, to Alexandria. So, anyway, a little shout out to her. Um... She is precious, and I had the best time talking to her. So, um, in, now he's after my shoes. Really, this is not. So, like a good mommy, if I had prepared this ahead of time, I would have put the baby in his playpen. But I didn't. So, um, we will do the best we can. Um, so, anyway, I ask God to please help me to use the gifts that he has blessed me with. And to try to... Think of some way that I could, you know, continue to share her love and her lot. And and the domino effect that I was talking about was that as people wrote about her, like I would have I would have friends and people that I know in other countries and different places like that that of course have not ever had the, the joy or the blessing of meeting Kaylee in person, but they would write to me these beautiful messages and say, I of course I did not know Kaylee. Cooper? Sorry. Coopy? And Kaylee, by the way, would think that this is so hilarious that um Sir Cooper is after mommy's shoe and everything on the shelves down here that he can do and that she, he is making me crazy. <laughs> she would think this was the funniest thing. And I always called her the Cooper Whisperer because she could do things with him and calm him and he would not be sassy or snappy with her. And seriously, I, it just amazed me um, what she could do with this little booger. Um, so Kaylee, I need your help, sister. Um, Anyway, uh, hopefully he will be entertained for the next few minutes untying my shoes. But friends would email me and send me messages and things and say, you know, hey, Margaret, of course, I've not ever met Kaylee in person, but I have sat here and I have watched her celebration of life, uh, her funeral, and it was so beautiful and the words that were spoken about her and the, the photos and things that were shared. And I have read these posts by all these people. All these different ages, these posts where people have written about her friends and, and different people that have just talked about how she touched their lives and how maybe they had met her one time. And, and they write these things about her that are just so touching. And I just feel as though I know her. And wow, what a beautiful soul she is. Oh my goodness, wow. I see, 
I see how you, I see how you must love her so much because I am just so touched by all of the messages that people have shared about her. So it really touched my heart for people to reach out to me and say, of course, I don't know her, but I feel as though I know her now by reading your post and by reading the things that people have shared about her. So um, that just really touched my heart. And I sometimes, you know, found myself saying as I was writing um, posts on Facebook and things, I found myself saying, oh, Kaylee Joy. You know, she just had that Kaylee Joy. And one of my dear friends, um, Nancy Peavy, I'm doing a little shout out to you too. She is a precious soul, and we often tease and say that we feel like we just are kindred spirits, and um, our souls have so much in common, and we, uh, she, she's just a dear, precious friend, and I remember distinctly that one of the days where I put, quote, Kaylee Joy, and I wrote about it in a Facebook message post, she said, oh, and Margaret, I love that. I hope to have more, quote, Kaylee Joy in my life this year, and I just thought, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's the whole thing. I want people. I want her to keep on loving people, and I want Kaylee's light to keep on shining brightly for others to see. And that light directly goes right back to her faith in God. Because without her faith and her love for God and her following Jesus, she couldn't have had the strength to get through all of the things that she did, to be a, an honor student. She had to miss days of school, but every, even when she was in the hospital, I have photos in the hospital working, getting a treatment for migraines, and working on all of her lessons, studying and, and, and doing things. So she would, she would stay caught up as best she could. And then when she got home, she'd catch up on everything. She'd have somebody bring her stuff, you know, from school. Or she'd meet somebody, or dad, or mom would meet somebody to get the things that she needed. And so just absolutely amazing to me that even with the days that she had to miss from school, sometimes a whole week if she was trying out a new um, uh, treatment for migraines, they went to Miami and Birmingham and different places. So sometimes she might miss three to five days. But she stayed caught up and she did her work. She was so determined. And she graduated as an honor student. That's determination. And the strength that she had came directly from her faith. I watched it. I saw it blossom. I saw her depending on it. I saw her leaning into and leaning towards that faith constantly. We talked about it. I got the inside scoop. And that light that shone from her even when she was in pain and when she was hurting, that compassion and that grace and that joy that just blossomed out of her came from all of that, came from that faith, came from the strength that she found that God gave her. And so, Coopy, come back. So I just, that was my, from the, ever since when I, when I could, Gain enough control of myself after I found out she passed away. Coopy, no, no. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on, good boy. Oh, you're a sweet boy. Yes, you are. Okay, well, that was that was easy. That was nice that he gave that up. Seeing that I'm on camera, you know, could have been a showdown between two of us. But when I finally was able to get a hold of myself, I just thought, oh, dear Lord, please help me to help her love and her light to continue to shine. And so one day, it hit me all of a sudden that I said, oh, I need a bracelet that says Kaylee Joy. I need for people to know what that is. This is my mission. I need this, this joy that she has, that she still gives me more than that on the new year if you follow me on Facebook you know some of the things that I'm talking about but I just need a way to share that with people and that when I'm out and about that I can I can share it and that others can share it and that it can most importantly be a reminder to ask God to come into our hearts and to help us with the things that are so difficult in life to look for him for his strength to help us and to guide us and to ask him to 
to bless the gifts that he's given us because we all have gifts. They're, they're all different and some are similar and some are kind of alike, but we all have gifts. You may not think you do, but you do. And we'll talk on that this year too. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, seriously. But hey, hello. You keep coming back and listening and showing up because John will so thank you. He might even send you a surprise every now and then. Okay? We'll work on that. Be less that he has to hear. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I just needed a reminder. Not really needed a reminder, but I wanted one that when I, I could look at something, it would just make my heart smile and it would remind me of so many of the things what she stood for and what her heart believed in. And it would add a smile to my day because every time I think about her, yep, I cry a lot. But this, see, that's so her, her and Cooper. I told you she was a Westie Whisperer. So yes, it makes me cry when I see her. Because I miss this sweet soul, I tell you. You have no idea what a void this is in my life, her not being here physically on earth. Um, but it also, you see the smile? It also adds huge, huge doses of joy to my life. When I look at her photos, makes me think about things we talked about, makes me think about what she stood for, how she's always smiling, and how behind her smile was the most adorable, precious, loving heart that I've ever seen in my life. And every day at this phase, I have to remind myself, hold tight to that blessing that God blessed you with, that you got to love on her and be a part of her life and her a part of yours. And while it was so short, way too short, because I had so many things in my mind we had talked about doing. And that's the other thing, is that she and I had always talked about we needed to collaborate together. Oh, wouldn't it be amazing, she would say, if one day we could somehow like have that we did something where we had this thing that we worked on together and we just took everything that we learned like everything that she had learned from dealing with um dealing with chronic migraines and the anxiety and the worry and the depression that comes with that and trying to cope with that how she learned to do that and the, the tools that she, she gained and the, the knowledge and how her strength and her faith grew. And then things that I have faced in my life. And how I've learned to cope with my worry wart little self. And anxiety that pops up in me. And beautiful ways that I have learned to cope and deal with these things. I still struggle with it. But not near like I did in the past. And now I have amazing tools of, of things that I can do. And of course, yeah, this year we'll talk about that too. I've shared some of it before with you in the past. But I just thought, you know what? Yeah. We we did. We had, that's why I say it's too, she left too, you know, she was taken too soon from this world. And we had so much left to do. I sat here at my laptop one day and I said, oh, Kaylee girl. Lucy girl. That's what I used to call her sometimes, too. I said, girl, we had so many things we were going to do together. But we're just going to have to do them in a new way, I guess. So we're collaborating together. And this year, with her help, I am going to to try to define what the true meaning of, quote, Kaylee Joy is. And I'm going to try to spread it in her honor with the hope of spreading her love and her light and her faith.
And I hope that you will grab hold of a dose of Kaylee Joy and you will carry it with you in your heart and your soul each day. And when you're feeling down, you're feeling tired, you're feeling like the world is against you, you feel like maybe nobody cares that day or that moment, you just kind of need to pick me up, a little dose of sunshine. I hope that you will see that phrase, this phrase, quote, Kaylee Joy. I hope you will see it. And that it will be this, this dose of encouragement and sunshine. It will be like this beautiful smile, smiling at you. That will say, you can do this. You are beautiful. You are amazing. And you, you, Cooper says so too. You have a gift. You have many gifts. You have a light that is your very own light that needs to shine. Let your soul shine. Let your heart shine. And the first way we can do that when we see somebody, when we meet them in passing, is to smile. And I hope you will smile this year. If you know Kaylee, if you know of her, if you loved her, if you love her now just from what you've read about her and things you've gotten to know about her, it was a one-time meeting that you did not ever forget. I hope you will hold on to that. And I hope you will let that be inspiration. To look for joy in every day, no matter what our circumstances are, I'm telling you, there could not be a more broken heart than mine. Every day, and wow, I just realized this. Today is the today is the fourth. I did not plan this to do this today. I said it would just hit me when it was the time. And as I told you, I did not even close the closet door. <laughs> if you know me, the closet door would have been closed if I had planned this. Um, anyway, I would have probably had on a cute statement necklace too, possibly. You know, something cute. Kaylee was all about statement necklaces, so I would have certainly had on a cute statement necklace and these earrings that I got for Christmas that are ones that she had in a photo of the two of us together. But I will save that for the next one, and I will try to doll myself up a little bit for the next video. But today, this one is real and raw, and it is just coming to you straight from the heart. And yes, today is January the 4th, and without even realizing it until I'm sitting here doing this, uh, it is two months since we lost her. And, as I was saying, who my heart is still so broken. Some moments I don't even know how I will breathe through the moment. But I will tell you this, and I'm not sugarcoating it. I've used that word a lot. <laughs> um... Well, it's better than the other thing that I sometimes say, but again, my mom is watching it, so, you know, and I'm Southern, and I mean, excuse me, we always say proper, nice things, right? Okay. If you believe that. But anyway, uh, I will not sugarcoat this. It is absolutely true that, hang on one second. It is absolutely true that looking for the joy in the beautiful things and recognizing the little things, the small moments that make me smile, that I know add a smile to somebody else's day, 
those are the things that are helping me through. And the signs that I see her sharing with me that she is with me in my heart every day and that she's walking this with me and with our family. So, of course, you know, Kaylee was all about bracelets and wearing lots of them and being fashionable. And, oh, mercy, she's a diva, I tell you, when it came to fashion. I will have to do some videos on telling you about our funny episodes of me trying to get my eyelashes to look as long as hers. And, well, that'll be another one. But so funny because she would laugh at me. Um, but we needed something special. And so that's why we have this. So I don't know. Can you see it? Let's see if I can show it to you. Remember, this is in quotes because this is not Kaylee's joy. This is a type of joy. And last year, my phrase for the year was choose joy. And it just hit me the other day when I realized that I made the decision. My phrase for this year is Kaylee joy. And I thought, wow. Choose joy was the phrase I chose for 2015. And now I've chosen Kaylee joy. Didn't ever think about that. What type of joy are we going to choose? Well, if we're going to choose joy, let's choose a good one. So this special joy I have to share with you straight from Kaylee. And again, here it is. So, this is the bangle style bracelet, and it says, Kaylee Joy. And on the back of it, let's see if we can see this, it says smile, because she had the most beautiful smile, as we know. Smile, let, let your light shine. Smile, let your light shine. You remember what I said earlier? First way, when you meet somebody, pass them on the road, street, whatever. Maybe they're frowning, they're having a bad day. You can smile. You might be having a bad day too. But if you smile, not kidding you, it makes a difference. If you smile, then you let your light shine. And maybe that's just the light, even if it's a little bit of a glimmer, just a teeny tiny dose of sunshine. Maybe that's the little bit, the dose of sunshine that somebody else needs today. And look at that. You just did it. So I hope that you will carry Kaylee Joy in your heart. And I absolutely would love it if you would wear it on your wrist. Because it would make her smile if we were being divas and wearing her favorite color, purple, lavender, and a cute bangle bracelet. Spreading her love and light and spreading her Kaylee joy. So, if you would like a bracelet, let me know. I'll be wearing mine. And as 2016 begins, I'm going to define Kaylee joy more, more and more. And I'm going to share with you the way that I am coping and healing and dealing with the greatest loss I have ever known. It's not easy. But I realized I heard a voice one day, and I felt like it was God and Kaylee having a tea party. And they were telling, they'd invited me, and they were telling me that I could not just sit here and be sad every day. That I had to use my gifts to try to continue to add. My thing has always been with my business, with my art, my photography, that I just hope to add a dose of sunshine to your day. And I just heard them saying to me, if you're sad every day, you can't spread your gifts. So we're going to help you find ways to continue adding doses of sunshine to people's lives. And then this beautiful thought came to my mind about sharing her joy. So, again, I hope you'll help me share Kaylee joy. I hope you'll carry it in your heart. And I hope you will smile. 
And when you need a smile, know I'm smiling at you. Even when it's hard, when you feel like you cannot breathe through the next moment, know that you are not alone. Because I promise you there are a lot of moments when I feel like that. This cuts me to my core. It feels, it is something so deep in the pit of my stomach sometimes, the hurt, the pain, the loss, the sadness. And sometimes it does, it feel, it takes my breath away. Because I'll think about her so strongly, I'll look at that picture or something of her, and I'll think, oh gosh, I'm going to call her, I'll send her a text message, or oh, i got to remember to tell her about this later when we talk. And it still does not seem real to me. I cannot do those things. I just feel like she should come from school or she's at her job or she's off with friends. It's so hard to wrap my head around this. But I knew that she would want me to try to live each day to the fullest and to make something beautiful with every day that I'm given. And she would want that for all of you too. Because she loved her friends and her family and the people that she met. And that she got to love on with her job. And So, let's carry Kaylee Joy in our heart. And bigger and better than that, by golly, let's spread it. I feel like it's the least I can do for her. Because I'll tell you this, her love and her lot is way too beautiful and too special to not be shining. So I'm going to help her to continue shining that light on the hearts of others. And I hope you'll join me. And have mercy. Go take a walk. Go take a break for your tea time or whatever. Sorry this was so long, but you know what? When the heart speaks, well, there it is. Okay, I'll be back. Got lots to do in 2016. I know. I've got to train him. <laughs> hey, he's coming along. He is so adorable and cute. And John and I are just, uh, it's so funny how we just see him, the things that as he's getting a little bit older, he's just progressing with in a positive way and, and kind of getting, you know, more mature and that kind of thing. So um, stay tuned for some of his monkey episodes. But thank you so much for all of your love and your support, your encouraging words with your messages and your posts and your emails, your cards, and most importantly, for your continued prayers. I promise you that they are felt. I promise you that my family, that we all need them because we are all so heartbroken and missing her every day. So thank you for being here for us. Okay, happy 2016. Let's do something beautiful with it. <laughs>